was so, I mean, it's like it would, it would have been such a stretch for my mind mm -hmm. to imagine mm -hmm. going, as it were, from where I was to where I am. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, it's like, how, how in the world? You know, I mean, it, it would have just seemed impossible, I think. If you had just seen the picture. If I just seen the picture. And not felt the, how it feels. Yeah, and not, not, not yeah. recognize the shifts in perception, the shifts in thinking, mm -hmm. and, and the internal changes that led up to it. But, but all along the way, it hasn't felt that way. It hasn't felt terrifying. Right. You know. But then you didn't do that. You didn't look in the future. You didn't try to. Uh, well, yeah. any time you I mean, do look I, in the future, yeah, it's, it's terrifying painful. to all of us. It's painful and terrifying. Mm -hmm. And for me, I came to see um, that there's no solution there. You know, I was trying to see where is this all going to lead? What's going to happen? How is it going to work? What about this? What about that? Mm -hmm. And there, as long as I had my mind out there thinking about those things, there was no solution to any of that. And none of the required you know, shifts were taking, out. were taking place. Because yeah. My attention was out there on the screen. Yeah. And for shifts to take place, the attention has to be drawn back to the mind. The only solution is in the mind, in the moment of choosing the right mind. That's where the idea of Himalayas comes in. People that are bolt to the Himalayas, get rid of all their possessions, get rid of everything, but haven't changed. In the Himalayas, it's just a symbol. It could be bolt away from family. It could be, I mean, David, you've talked about story after story of people that have done that, you know, thinking that that was going to give them enlightenment, but their minds hadn't been changed at, at the pace of the behavioral change. And that's not going to bring enlightenment. It's another form of the ego's deception. And it's, it's sort of like, well, if this is what the future is supposed to look like, then let me get to it right now and skip all the steps because, you know, I'll just go through all the pain all at once, right now. And it, what's the purpose there? It's always what's most helpful to me and to, you know, the mind. And what am I being guided to? Mm -hmm. You know, we have to remember and keep pulling it back to that and mm -hmm. asking it moment by moment, what mm -hmm. am I guided to? It wasn't, mm -hmm. there's no formula. You didn't make that decision. No, it was mm -hmm. not, it was not Rhonda's mm -hmm. idea. Oh, I think I'll go to Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. I was called. Mm -hmm. So. It's really this thing of trust, too, where right. Jesus says the whole teacher of God, all the characteristics of the teacher of God is based on the first one, which is trust. Mm -hmm. It's the ego that, again, is looking out to the future mm -hmm. that, that, oh yeah, that's what the ego's always been. Mm -hmm. Hey, you want to get into a career? Mm -hmm. Plan ahead. What's your five-year plan? What's your ten-year plan? You see, the ego is always looking to the future and trying to, mm -hmm. to provide for itself and maintain its self-concept. Then we get into the course and it's the five-year plan, teacher of God, what will that look like? Ah, ego. people, ego, yeah. ego gets at that all. And then there's a beautiful line in the mm -hmm. teacher's manual where he says, trust would settle every problem now. And it's like, oh, trust again, you know. I don't have to know all the steps that I'm going to have to seem to take in a perceptual sense. All I have to do is trust right now. And... I mean, that really simplifies things. It doesn't make it into a big, complicated thing that I'm like a maze that I'm going to have to go through. If I can stay with the spirit in the moment and just moment by moment be guided, what's next? You know, what did you have for me here, Holy Spirit? Then there's a real gentleness, there's a real loosening that, that seems to take place. It's like loosening the screw, with this fellow and Adrian said. I'm picturing, when I'm hearing David speak, I'm picturing this big structure that I've made up. And he says, there's this bolt that holds it together up here, and there's a screw. And he says, what I hear him saying is, loosen the And he said, he said, what I'm hearing is I can keep on just unscrewing the nut, and just little by little. And that, to me, is a good symbol of that present trust, mm -hmm. that things aren't going to crash down. I can just, moment by moment, what would you have me do? Where would you have me go? What would you have me say and to whom? And it's such a relief to me to to see that I don't have to know it all. I don't have to have the five-year plan or ten-year plan. I don't have to 
see the entire picture you don't have to have a plan. before I start right where I am mm -hmm. with what I know is right there for me. You know, and, I, and I have repeatedly kind of gotten that message in various symbolic ways. You know, of, of don't wait until you know the whole thing to get started. All you have to do right now is get started. And, and, and you know that part. You know, you know what's called for there. Just do that. And then the next, the next step will be shown, will be shown you as you're, as it's time to take it. Mm -hmm. You know. The flip side of that, you keep saying, I know, I know, but the flip side could be, I don't, I don't, <laughs> yeah, I, don't like, know. I don't know. I really, yeah. I mean, you know, you, yeah. you can look at the, the other direction. That might be more helpful really than saying, know. I know what I have in front of me. <laughs>
sometimes this is a sad, disorienting, confusing time for me because I'm beginning to look at everything that I ever learned and everything I ever valued and all of my relationships. In fact, in the Catholic bookstore, it's interesting because there's a Saint Faustina. And she has a diary where she she diaries her experiences of Jesus calling her, and it was her call. And in that, there's many things said in there identical to what Jesus was saying to Helen in the Course. And there were identical resistances from Sister Faustina, from how, as Helen had to Jesus in the Course. And there were times when she didn't feel peaceful, and Jesus said, you're doing just fine, but you are in a state of confusion, sadness, and disorientation, which is also outlined in the Course. And, you know, so it's for some, you know, it may just swoop and feel real peaceful and joyful. For me, it's, it's, it's you know, it's, the struggle has been the resistance and the feeling now that it, isn't, it wouldn't be possible. And the peace comes in when, yes, this is possible. And, 